Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's tutorial, you will learn how to build a RESTful API and CRUD operations inside a RESTful API uh, using .NET Core 3.1 and uh, we will use a mock implementation and uh, we will also use Entity Framework Core to talk to our SQL Server database to add, edit, delete and retrieve the employees. So if, if we and we will use Postman to fetch all the results. So if we get the employees, we have three employees. If I want to get a single employee, we can do that as well by putting it in the route. Uh, we can add new employees and we can delete employees and we can edit employees. So we'll see how to create all of that in a RESTful API in .NET Core and an EF Core. So let's jump into the tutorial. So we have opened Visual Studio 2019 and let's start by creating uh, a solution for ourselves. So I'll create a new project and from here I will select uh, ASP.NET Core Web Application um, and I'll click next. I'll give it a name and a location. I'm saving it to my desktop. And I'll name the application a REST API crud demo you can name it whatever you like and we'll wait for the solution to uh, build and from here I'll I have ASP.NET version 3.1 and from here I'll select this API option and I'll create so we'll wait for our application to be created now that our application has been created, uh, let's see by by just running it straight away as to what it offers uh, us out of the box. So I'll I'll build it first by building the solution. We can also press Control Shift B, and uh, once the build has been done, I'll just press uh, Start. So the build is successful, and I'll run it. It will open us a Chrome window and it should give us, it has one web API controller and which is like a weather forecast controller and gives us uh, values of, of uh, temperatures in Celsius and Fahrenheit um, and it's a list of, of temperatures like this. So we are not going to use one, uh, we are going to create another one for ourselves uh, like an employees controller so let's do that so let's create ourselves on by coming here right click on controllers add add a new controller and I'll select the API controller option from here and click add I'll name this employees controller and we have this employees controller created for us. So in here, I basically need five uh, API methods, um, which are get all employees, get a single employee, uh, add an employee, edit an employee, and deleting an employee. So I need all those five methods over here in this controller. So, uh, so before doing that, let's create a service for ourselves which will basically be used to to fetch data uh, we'll initially start by creating a mock version of it but then later on uh, hook it up with NT framework core so that it fetches stuff from the database and it also adds uh, employees to the database so let's do that um, let's start by creating a folder and call it employee data sorry in here, I'll create an interface um, called I employee data, and this will basically have those five functions that I was talking about. So I'll I'll start by saying uh, get employees. Get employees will not take anything as as the method parameter but it will return a list of employee 
and let's create our employee model now it's time to do that so i'll create another folder called models and in here i will create my employee model initially this will only have two properties one for the id which i'm taking as a good and the other one as the name which will be a string and that's it for now and i'll reference this employee model in in our class over here it gets it from models and similar to that i will create a method for a method structure for getting a single employee so this will return me an employee it will say get employee single and the key would be the id so it will fetch me the employee by id the next would thing would be to add an employee so add employee method and this will basically uh, or return me the created employee and it will take the employee model as well the next one would be the delete one so i'll not return anything delete employee takes in the employee model and we'll see if we have to change the methods uh, structure a bit when we are actually doing it but let's keep it as as this for now and uh, the last one would be to edit an employee so i'm returning the employee back and edit employee okay and let's create a mock implementation of this employee data so i'll create a class called mock employee data and after we have successfully uh, integrated it this application with mock employee data we will create another one with which uh, calls it sql employee data and it it uh, it basically uses entity framework core to save its data to a sql server so we will do that in the second part of this um, solution so in here i am i basically inherit or implement uh, i employee data and i will implement the interface okay we have a structure ready so if i just close this and come back to employees controller in here we basically first want to inject this uh, this mock employee data or i employee data into our controller so let's do that by going to the start startup and in our services section we will add this to our services as a singleton of type i employee data so when when i ask for i employee data i get mock employee data and i've used singleton for a reason because we are mocking the employee data and uh, i'll be creating a, a couple of employees which i want to remain the same for the lifetime of the application so uh, I, i've used singleton for now and in the constructor of the controller i will now basically inject the i employee data that i am adding to the services and i'll create a private field So now I can use this private field in my controller and this is basically dependency injection. Uh, it gives me an error because uh, the I employee data is not public. So let's make that a public. This should be gone now. So the first method uh, we want to create is get all employees. Um, so I'll start by saying public i action result um, get employees and this will be an 
HTTP GET method and the route for that would be API slash employees so gives us all the employees and I'll return the uh, the employees that I'm getting from the mock employees so I'll say employee data dot get employees and this returns us uh, I have to wrap it in an OK object because I'm passing data back um, so I'm getting the employees from this mock repository and I'm, I'm giving it back as an HTTP OK uh, result so we still have don't have the implementation for the get employees over here so let's do that I will create uh, a couple of employees I will hard code it for uh, for our mock employee data implementation so I'll say a private field of an, a list of employees and we'll call it employees is equal to new list of employee I'll give it an ID of a new GUID and similarly I will create another employee that's it uh, and now we can use this list of employees uh, to return over here so return employees this will be happy and I guess now we have hooked everything together from the start to end so if we run our application we should be able to see these two list of uh, employees from here uh, in, in, in our get method so let's spin up our application to see uh, it in action and we will use postman for this to create a new get request um, and all we need is the the URI for this um, and we will define our route as API slash employees as we have defined it uh, in our controller so when this is running if I send the request now it should give me the list of employees as we defined it uh, in our mock employee data so now that is running let's create the get single employee method I'll copy paste this and change it to get employee we also need the ID to the uh, employee that we want to fetch so I'll paste the ID into the URI and the parameter to be a GUID as ID and I'll now call the get, get employee method and pass the ID method to it also I want to check if if the employee is being returned uh, so if employee is not equal to null I'll return the OK response of employee otherwise I will return a, a 404 not found and we will pass a message uh, to the client saying uh, the the employee with ID of I'll use string uh, interpolation for this and with the ID was not found so we can give uh, a generic message back uh, to the to the client that are calling us and let's create the implementation to this so all I need to return is from the list of employees um, get me the single or default so that if it is not found I can pass it as null and I want to match the ID to the ID so if it is found give the uh, employee back otherwise give a 404 error so let's start this and create another request for for fetching the employee so before giving the same GUID again we have to send the request to fetch the new GUID because it's a mock uh, repository and it'll create the GUIDs again so we want to fetch basically the new GUID that was generated and pass it along in the route 
So if I send this now, it should fetch us the first employee. If I use the other grid, it should fetch us the second employee. Sweet. Um, so now we have two methods working. Let's move on and create the third controller method, which is adding an employee. So that will be of type HTTP post and we don't need the ID in the route. We need the employee model as part of our request. And uh, we will say employee data dot add employee and pass in the, the, the parameter that we're getting from the client. Um, we don't really need this. And we will say, uh, we will return basically a, a 201 created that the, the server has basically created uh, your request. And to do that, we will return a created HTTP back. And it needs a URI to the newly created object and the object values as well. So we will use HTTP context to, to fetch the, to, or to create the URL. So I'll use the request scheme. I will use the, uh, the request dot host and I would use the path. And I also want to give the ID of the newly generated uh, this, uh, the object. So I will use employee.id. And at last, I want to give this object value back. So I'll pass the whole employee model back. And by doing this, we should be good if we have created the implementation for it. So to implement this mock repository, we will basically add employees, employee to the list of employees. And, and before doing this, because we don't have an ID, the client will not pass an ID and we shouldn't receive it anyway. So we will give it uh, the ID to the newly created employee over here. And this should work. So if I spin up the application now and create a new request in postman, which should be of type post. And we will use the same route because that's what we have to find in our controller. Uh, we do need the body. So I'm sending a JSON body and all we need is the name because the ID is generated by our application. I'm passing it my name. So if we send this, Something has gone wrong uh, oh, because our application never started. Um, it's complaining that I'm not returning anything. So let's return the employee, even though we are not using it. So we can use it as a void, uh, but we can change that later on. So now that our application has started, uh, we'll go back here and send the request again. And now we can see the newly created object being passed back. It's a 201 created from the server and the headers, the content type, sorry, the location of the newly created response is this. And we can use this location to fetch our newly created employee and it should just work um, straight away. And if I send this, uh, here you go. It's the newly created employee and it gives us back even the get all employees now gives us three responses, employee one, employee two, and Samir Saini. So our three methods uh, in our CRUD operation of uh, RESTful APIs are working. Uh, let's go on and implement the next method that is um, the delete and the edit. The next method that we'll create is the um, delete employee. So we'll copy this HTTP post, change it to HTTP delete. We'll use the same route, uh, but we'll pass the ID um, so that the we can identify which one, which uh, employee to delete. We'll pass it as a method parameter. 
and we'll say delete employee and here uh, we'll first see if the del if the employee is present or not otherwise we'll return a 404 so we'll get the employee <coughs> by uh, by the code by the id and we'll use the employee data dot get employee pass the id in if we get an employee back that means employee is not null uh, we will execute the employee data dot delete action um, it just uh, will pass the employee over here and if that happens uh, delete the employee otherwise return uh, not found because we just say it back to the user that we were not able to found, find the employee and the message remains the same so I'll just copy this and to implement delete employee in our mock repository uh, we basically have to from the list of employees remove employee and this should work let's see it in action if it's working or not build succeeded and we will create a new request in postman uh, this will be of type delete and we use this URI which has the ID in it uh, but we need to change the ID so let's get the latest ID from all the employees and I'll use this I'll use the second employee and I paste it in our URI and execute send uh, it comes back with employee with ID this wasn't found so I'll see what the error is I'll just send this again to see actually it, it did work out but it removed it so let's see what, what what's happening over here maybe we are not returning a status bank that's why and it's always defaulting to not found so in a here if the employee deletion is successful return um, you can send an ok back or a 204 as well uh, in my case I'll just send an ok empty object back so that if it's 200 the employee has been deleted successfully I'll restart my application we should still have two employees over here because the application restarted and if I send the request to get all the employees and get two employees back I'll use one of the ID I'll use the second one um, paste it in the route send the request it came up with a 200 OK and uh, an empty object back if we do this again it should come up with a 404 because we've already deleted the employee it shouldn't come here uh, the list of employees is now has only one employee and if we try to fetch it again um, we should get a 404 from this get single employee method as well it's a 404 so we can we can say it's working fine so I'll stop this and let's move on to implement the edit or update method. I'll copy the structure. It will be of type HTTP patch and we we need the ID over here. I'll, I'll rename this to edit employee. Uh, we need the ID and we also need um, from the body we need the employee object with the changes so this is the employee that we changed and let's remove this so the first thing uh, would be basically to see if the employee exists or not so I'll fetch the employee as I was doing it over here. I'll copy paste it and see if employee is not null. Then I basically want to edit the employee 
and before sending the edit I will basically uh, or, or we can say this is the um, existing employee existing employee and we'll say if existing employee is not null that means we have an employee in our database um, we will change the id of the newly created employee so that it can ref reference from id uh, to be the existing employee dot id and now we will say edit employee and uh, we'll return something back over here but let's let's do the implementation part first so we get this employee uh, which is the changed employee so it ha it may or may not have all the values in it um, so we will fetch the employee again over here so we will call get employee like this um, so we'll say where existing employee is equal to the get employee and pass the ID and we'll just override the values over here um, <clears throat> we'll say existing employee dot name is equal to employee dot name and this should basically change the existing employees uh, attributes and uh, it basically updates the existing value and we can return the employee over here like this so <clears throat> let's see if this is working or not back in here we basically want to return something back um, we got the the changed employee so we can return an ok response back with the new employee so which means our employee is working fine um, if I start this and see if it is working or not I'll create a new HTTP patch method will use the same URI as of a delete one or a fetch single one and we will create a body which has the changed employee details I'll, the only thing to change here is the name so I'll change the first employee's name to my name and let's execute the get all employees to get the latest grid so I'll change the first employee employee one to semi uh, I'll go to my patch function and paste the ID into the URI I'll hit send and it gives me a result back and with a 200 message back so to prove it that it updated will come here in the get all employees how it showed employee one this should now change to semi so now the two employees with one updated one it, it's fetching us all of the things nicely so we can say that um, our mock implementation is now done and we have implemented all these five CRUD operations um, with retrieval as well um, and now in in the second part of of this of this tutorial we will now implement uh, entity framework core and save and retrieve delete and edit all our stuff in SQL server um, so let's let's get started with it to start with entity framework we basically have to install a few NuGet packages to to in to involve uh, entity framework core into our project so we'll go to dependencies and manage NuGet packages <coughs> The package we will search for um, is Microsoft dot entity framework core dot SQL server. I'm installing this because it 
also installs all the dependencies that we need for the entity framework core to be installed in our project so i'll install that along with that i will also install entity framework core dot tools this is basically used to uh, for our core migrations all right so our uh, NuGet packages have been installed and as you can see in our database I'm, I'm going to use the server and we don't have any databases at the moment so we will create a database using entity framework core migrations and let's start by by adding um, I or get adding the context to our solution so I'll right click on the project add new folder and say employee context Or uh, we don't even need this folder. Let's let's include this as part of our models. I'll create a class over here and call it employee context. This basically inherits from DB context and we will use Microsoft Entity Framework Core. I'll create a constructor of this class and basically use the DB context options. Of type employee context and pass this to the to the base constructor. In here, I will also create a DB set property of the employee model so, and call this employees. This will basically act as a table, which is a DB set of employees. So employees would be a table created in our employee DB database. And in, in our employee model, let's Put this as a key and name as a required field we can also put a max length property on it max length takes um, a few parameters here like the length let's say 50 as the length and an error message if it exceeds 50 Okay, and after that, we have to add the uh, the employee DB context as part of our startup to basically inject the service. So we will do two things over here. One is to add the DB context. So services dot add DB context pool, um, and you can read about the differences between add DB context versus DB context pool of of type employee uh, employee context and it takes options in here so I'll say option start sorry use SQL Server and use SQL Server requires a string connection so uh, connection string so we will define a connection string in our app settings module by by defining a section of connection strings and mentioning uh, the employee employee context connection string this would be this would basically take a format of a server server I would 
call I would use this server name I would paste that here it would also need a database which we don't have at the moment so I'll mention um, employee DB and a trusted underscore connection is equal to true it takes that so we can fetch this connection string in our startup by using the configuration over here so we will say configuration dot get connection string and we will mention the key over here which we gave so employee context connection string so this should basically fetch us the connection string for our SQL server along with that because the app DB context pool uses a scoped um, lifetime uh, we would use instead of a singleton which we are using for the mock employee data we would now use uh, add scoped and we will change this mock employee data to to be called as another implementation which we will define now so in our employee data we would create another implementation called SQL employee data because we are talking to a SQL server now I'll add the implementation this would also inherit from uh, I employee data and I will implement the interface okay and just to get references here okay so our startup would now say uh, if I'm asking for employee data and give me the SQL um, employee data and this should work now uh, it's showing me some error because I guess it needs another bracket so I'll close the startup file and in our because our employee controller is already hooked up with everything it doesn't need to change uh, we just want to implement get all employees over here so now we can in here in the constructor get the employee context we can say it we can call it as employee context and store it in a private variable so now that we have the employee context over here let's fetch the employees from the context so employee context dot employees and dot to list so this would basically return uh, all the employees from from the table of employees to implement get employees we would basically return uh, employee context dot employees dot single or default like we were doing in our mock implementation if the ID matches return the employee we can do this or we can we can use find as well find usually works by if you if you are doing this ah, dot employees dot find by ID and something is wrong over here 
or basically it doesn't even need that it needs the id field over here uh, it fetches an employee to us and it can be null so we will just return the employee because we are handling the status outside of this method um, and let's see till here if, if our entity framework connection is all working or not but before that because we don't have a database and, and a table let's run our migrations now um, we will go to tools and we will go to NuGet package manager console and we will type add migration and hit enter it's asking us for a name for the migration so I'll call it initial I'll call it initial migration and hit enter this will create a migrations folder for us it's basically code uh, which represents a table to be created in the database so it, it has created a migrations folder with an initial migration class and to basically up create the actual table we will call update database so till now before hitting this I can refresh this database to show you that nothing has been created yet but after I execute this it runs the previously created migration just the latest one so it will update the database for us because this script contains all the things necessary to create the table and the database so once the script has run successfully you, you will be able to see um, the database uh, in in our databases so the employee DB and you would see one table in it uh, which is the employees table and also you can see the EF migrations history table is here um, <clears throat> if I select it it shouldn't be anything over there there's no data uh, but it has two columns the ID and the name which we defined in our employee model uh, and the employee context had this employees DB set um, thing which creates the, the table in a database <clears throat> so now basically uh, if we start our application and we have our employees controller uh, everything should work as usual but it shouldn't fetch anything um, so let's see if we get an empty array back so start the application well actually we'll face one error because we haven't uh, said that we should use a SQL employee database uh, or I have forgotten that we have said it oh we have already done that so let's run our uh, project and once this is up and running <clears throat> we'll go to the get all employees and we'll hit send This should basically fetch us an empty list of employees. You can see uh, it's an empty array, so it's it's working as it should. So let's uh, implement the the add functionality so that we can add an employee and we can see if we are able to fetch it or not. So I'll go to my SQL employee data implementation and in the add employee, I'll basically use the context. So I'll call employee context dot add dot employees dot add and I'll pass the employee object that we are sending before doing that we also want to create the ID because it's not an incremented ID so we will create a GUID and add the employee over here and after doing that we'll save the changes and this should run and return the employee that we created and if we run this now and we go to our um, add method in the add employees it's a post type uh, let's create an employee with the name Samir Saini so when I run send I should get back a 201 It's still trying to build and run. Uh, 
Sweet. So we got 201 back and the body contains the, the newly created employee with the ID as well. And the 201, the headers in the location, we can fetch the employee by just copy pasting it in our get call. So if we get the single employee, we should basically get 200 and the employee details over here. So this is all working and the get all employees should now have one result, which it has. Let's go and check the database. So if I select star on the employees table again, I should now see one employee over there. So this is working uh, nicely. Now let's implement the other two actions as well, which is the delete and the edit. In the delete one, we will basically uh, find the empl employee. So we will say, where existing employee is equal to employee context dot employees dot find find the employee and if employee if there's an existing employee then we want to delete it employees dot uh, remove remove takes the entity so we'll pass the employee object over here uh, actually the existing employee over here and uh, basically let me check the reference to this again. If we are finding it already, we don't need to do that again. So we are getting the employee already. So we don't need to find it again. So in here, in the delete implementation, I'll skip this and directly call the remove uh, employee because we are fetching it already through our database. So we don't need to return anything as it's a void. So this should work and we need to save changes of course and for the edit employee we will uh, fetch the employee here because this is the edited employee so let's fetch the employee like this and see if the existing employee is not null Um, then we need to basically update it. So we'll pass the updated entity. Uh, we'll use the employee.id over here. And in our context dot update, it takes the entity again. So we'll pass in the employee over here. Uh, basically has everything in there because in the controller we uh, we are basically editing the id before sending it to the employee so uh, we just have to update it like this and save changes so a return takes the changed employee which we can send it back so now that we have our implementations for all the things ready uh, let's see this in action i'll spin up my solution again And once it is up and running, I'll call get all employees. I'll hit the send button. It should just give me one at the moment, but we'll, we'll add one more so that we can test the delete and the edit operations. So it's now up and running and it's hitting the get request. We will add a few more. So we will say, employee one and hit the send button comes up with a 201 created i'll add employee two and similarly employee three so in our table we should have four records now instead of just one um, <clears throat> now let's try to um, edit uh, an employee now to edit an employee i want to make a small correction in the sql employee data 
class file um, instead of passing the employee over here so this was employee rather than that because we want to track the entity we would now make the name equal to the new name that we want to edit and we want to send this to entity framework to update and then save changes so with having this uh, we will now be able to track the entity and update the changes to the sql server so let's try that we will use employee employee tools id and we'll paste the id over here and we'll rename employee to to be called as employee 5 and if we send this now we should get a 200 response back and as soon as we get the response back we should also see that the new employee data has been changed to employee 5 as you can see it now and if we go to our database if we refresh this again employee 2 has now been changed to employee 5 so edit works as expected and now if we want to delete this employee 5 we will just copy paste the id from here to the route and if we send this delete button it says as 200 okay without in any body that means our employee should have been deleted from the database and if we just try to do that again we should get a not found error and the get all employees should fetch only three results now so as you can see we have successfully created a crud um, restful api so we were able to retrieve values we were able to delete values add new employees edit it and all this using entity framework core um, i hope you all uh, liked the video if you liked it uh, just give it a thumbs up um, do subscribe to my channel for some more awesome content and and keep watching cheers have a good day